Rah. See him a beast when you hear that sound like ah. Yeah, beat on the beat when you hear that sound like Woo. Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like ha. Yeah, me, I'm a G-Rain Fighting February 4th, UFC Vegas 68, somebody who you've probably seen in dozens of interviews Like I just told him, like I have Adam Fugit, Adam, my man, how you doing? Almost fight week Yeah, man, doing great It's uh, Honestly, I've never felt better uh, at this point of camp and I'm ready to go and um, you know usually you got some body fatigue and you know the calorie uh, management's getting the better of you but right now I feel really good man and as I mentioned fighting February 4th UFC Vegas 68 going up against uh, Yusaku Kinoshita tough name but I think I got it close enough as I said man dozens of interviews I'm not trying to beat anything to, uh, to a whatever the expression is beat it to a dead horse uh You've been talking your fight for weeks with many of people, many podcasters. We've all seen the interviews. So I want to do something a little bit differently today, something that I haven't seen you do a whole lot of. And that's just kind of relax, hang out for 10 minutes and talk some UFC fights. I assume you're also a fan of the sport along uh, as well as a fighter, correct? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> well, we, it, it'll be all casual, big fights, I'm sure. And all names, you know, all fights you're aware of. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go one by one. We'll break them down. I'll ask you how you think about each of them. And then towards the end, I'll get your thoughts on your fight and stuff like that. But as I've said, you've discussed this so much on so many channels. I don't think there's a need to say anything else about it. You're going to kick this guy's ass. Enough said there. Uh, let me ask you, the biggest fight that was announced recently, the one that everybody seems to be talking about after Francis Ngannou's departure, John Jones, Cyril Gan. Who wins that one? Man, I, I'm i going with John Jones. I I'm just I'm not going to go against him, man. He's, uh, in my opinion, the GOAT. Um, his his one loss being a DQ, you know, I don't even take that into consideration. Uh, when he's on and he's in, in on his game, you know, I just – he's pretty – he's pretty unbeatable, you know. Um, he's he's a chess player to the, to the max. So, um, seeing how Gon had trouble with Francis on the ground, you know, um, it's going to have to worry about John, you know, John Jones getting on top of him, you know? So that's, that's my prediction is it's going to be a John Jones W. You know, pull yeah. it out somehow. I kind of agree. The three years away scares me, but like you said, he's the goat. So it's kind of hard to go against the goat. Um, Another fight where a lot of people consider Kamar Usman to be the goat or close to it. He's taking on Leon Edwards again, take two, running that one back. You see that one going differently. You think Leon's going to get another crazy knockout? What goes What goes down this time? I think Kamar is the is the goat for welterweights um, at this point in his career. Um, I think it changes, you know, generation by generation. Obviously, GSP was the goat of the welterweight division before, but um, you know, Leon, you know, got the head kick in the last fight and, and put him away and. Maybe that gives him a lot, sparks a lot more confidence, you know, against Kumar. Um, but I think we all, you know, we learn from our losses and losses make fighters better, especially when there is, you know, learning going on. And I just see Kumar coming back and, you know, showing us the next version of himself, which I think is just going to be even scarier. You know, the guy's, he's, he's tough, man. And, you know, just real quick, while we're talking about losses, uh, you're coming off of your UFC debut, which was a loss. And that was your first loss in quite a while, I believe, since, what, 2017 or something like that against Austin Vanderford? Um, uh, no, I lost uh, I lost after that to Kalen Hill. And oh, LFA. yeah, that's right. In 2018. Yeah. Well, r regardless, first loss in a while, looking to get your first UFC win. Coming off of a loss, like, what are you going to do differently this time around, so to speak? But more specifically, like, what did you learn that you want to do differently? Like, your first time in the UFC, anything you didn't expect that you're going to put to work going forward this time? You know, uh, no excuses. Nine days notice is, uh, you know, it's, Props, it's, it's kind of the, car, the cards are stacked against you a little bit. Uh, I'm excited to show everybody what a, a full fight camp Adam Fugit looks like. In fact, I've seen that on Twitter, fight camp Fugit. And so, um, you know, I'm, I want to go out there and show them, hey, this is what I, I can do when I'm given the proper time to prepare for anybody. And, and I think if I had the proper preparation for that fight, that it would have been different. You know, um, I'm used to having a gas tank that's just basically full and I can go out there and push the gas pedal to the max and go. And, 
Um, and I think my biggest learning lesson in that one is that is um, sure the, the gas tank was a little low, but I should have been smart enough to, to kind of back off the gas a little bit. And uh, in the first round I had the takedown, you know, landed the takedown and I did it through, you know, kind of utilizing his offense to get tie ups. And in that third round, in between the rounds, I had my coach want, you know, asked me to get back into some wrestling. And I just, through our communication, I, I kind of took that the wrong way as, oh, I, I need to get on this guy's legs. You know, I need to get him to the ground. And, and uh, you know, I, I slammed the pedal to the metal and, you know, it didn't get the takedown. And then not being smart, not getting back out of my range, I immediately tried to you know, throw punches behind that. And somebody that's, you know, good, very good, um, very talented and skilled, like uh, Michael Morales, he was able to evade and then put a combination on me, which I think is kind of what he was looking to do for most of the fight, you know, is yeah. get me to overextend. So. Well, Hey man, I always tell fighters this who lose their UFC debut. It's much better to lose your debut than it is to lose a very important title fight in five years from now. You know what I mean? So Take those lessons to work and put them to work on uh, February 4th. No doubt about it. You're going to cash that dub. Uh, For just sure. talking a few more fights here that do not involve yourself before I do ask you about you. One yeah. that really excites me coming up, Islam versus Volkanovsky. I have yeah. no idea how that fight's going to go down. Do you? You know, man, I'm a big fan of Volks. Like, I love the footwork. I love the way he controls the space. His whole offensive game um, is very intriguing. Mm -hmm. You know, I just think that he's the better striker. And, you know, we've seen with those Dagestani guys, yeah, you know, they're, they're second to none on the ground, and, and Islam's going to have to get them on the ground. But, you know, when somebody's controlling the, the pace and the space correctly and they're not on the line to, to get taken down, you know, it, that makes – they're – takedown defense very good i think islam's gonna have a a little bit tougher time than he thinks getting him to the ground and you know i just i'm gonna go with volkanovsky in this one i think that he's fought better strikers than islam has i, I think he is the better striker than him and if islam you know commits a couple of the mistakes that he did in the Oliveira fight where Oliveira didn't you know take advantage you know charles kind of marched into his space and and put himself in a position to get taken down, you know, wanting to say, Hey, my, my jujitsu is better than yours. You know, and I, I don't understand why you want to fight that way. You want to be, you know, the smarter fighter and there be the guy playing chess. And, and I think that's Volkanovsky. I think he's going to be out there creating the space, creating the pace of the fight. Islam's going to, you know, find himself overextended some and he's going to pay the price, you know? I hope you're right, man. Cause I'm a huge Volk fan, but Islam scares me. He is, Whew, so good. I thought Charles was going to dog walk Islam. So wrong. So wrong. Right. Uh, while Volkanovsky steps up, Josh Emmett and Yair Rodriguez are going to be fighting for the interim uh, featherweight belt. That's another tough one to predict. What do you think happens in that one? Uh, I had somebody ask me that one before, and I kind of went back and watched some more of, of Josh Emmett. Um, I, you know, I thought I might change it, but I'm gonna gonna go with Josh Emmett again. You know, um, just being that he's a wrestler, and I, I come from a wrestling background, and you know, I he's got, he's got confidence in his hands. He takes good angles. He's got um, good wrestling, and you know, Yair is a he's a little bit more of a you know, well, he's kind of more of a cobra with his striking, right? You mm -hmm. know, he's looking for his opportunities, but. The pressure and again, just control in space. You know, I, I don't know. I don't see Yarier being able to keep Emmett off of him for that inside boxing. And you know, when he gets inside and he's boxing, and Rodriguez goes to throw back at him, he, I can see him getting taken down from that. You know, um, I, I just I, I'm going to go with Emmett. I think that the skills from Emmett outmatch the striking from Yarier. So this one was announced today. I don't know if you saw it, but Henry Cejudo taking on Aljamain Sterling April 8th in presumably New York City. Who's uh who's the Bantamweight champion after that one? That's that's an awesome fight. I didn't know that yeah. at all. And this one's catching me completely off guard. And I will say for the longest time, I, you know, I was salty because I don't believe Cejudo beat Demetrius in their rematch. Um, I went back and watched it. It's a very close fight. Sure. 
personally, I still like Demetrius, and I think that he, he took it, but that's in the past. And uh, I'm not going to let my saltiness towards Triple C, Henry Cejudo, uh, blind me anymore. That dude is good. He's really good. He, he, I've been watching some of his YouTube stuff and some of his breakdowns. He's very intelligent, too. Um, and, you know, Aljo is, you know, he's a he's a jujitsu beast, man. I don't like his striking. I don't. I, I I really think that he needs to like focus in that aspect of his game. Um, I don't really like his takedowns all that much. He's kind of like that guy that's gonna. Like, I see a lot more of him jumping on people's backs and backpacking them to death. You know, um, I from his from being on the back, I do like how he kind of like beats people up back there you know and and is able to remain with control that's so, such a strong skill to have you know but i'm gonna go with henry man he's i think his intelligence for the game is just crazy um after kind of the stuff i've been studying from him uh, i think he's gonna come out with a good game plan on the feet because i think that his striking is going to be better than aljamain's you know the, the size difference might be a little bit but um they're like height wise but i think he's gonna have a great striking plan um, for Aljamain and you know he's an Olympic wrestler um, it's kind of funny you know Joe Rogan you know like, we don't get a knock on him enough I guess but he said something about uh, Henry's wrestling being like amateur or something like that and I'm like I and you know the Olympic wrestlers in the world are not amateurs those are the those are specialists. Those are the best wrestlers in the world so I don't you know I don't know, know where you know maybe it, it took two hit of the cigar or something, but yeah, I don't know where you came up with that logic, but Henry Cejudo is Olympic champion and his wrestling is top tier level. Um, I see Aljamain having problems trying to take him down. And if Cejudo wants to go to the ground, I, I don't see him having any problems getting Aljamain there. Um, but I also just think that it's going to be a smarter fight for him to kind of wear on him on the feet and keep the pace, keep the space, um, utilize his kicks. He's got very good kicks, both inside, outside. Um, and yeah, you know, I just, I, I see Henry Cejudo pulling that one out. Tough and then we're going to have to hear him. about Triple C having four four belts, you know? Quadruple C, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I don't want to hear that, but I think it will probably happen because, yeah, Henry is, he's that good. Um, last one I want to um, ask you about, not a title fight or anything, just one that really got me excited. Justin Gaethje and Rafael Fazeev. You hear about that one? I I might have seen like a poster for that. And I I don't know enough about Fazeev to wanna to make a prediction there. I don't know about enough about him at all. Um we know what Justin does though, you know, he's gonna be out there in your face, pushing the pace and trying to, to clobber that calf, you know. So I'll have to watch some of uh Rafael Fazib's uh stuff, but if he can you know, if he can shut that that part of the game down, we've seen in the past a few Gagey fights, you know, once his his bread and butter gets shut down, he kind of just spirals out of uh, control and eventually loses, you know, loses the fight. Definitely keep an eye on that fight, dude. It's going to be a, a banger. That's what I'm like super, super excited for. But enough of them. Real quick, I, I just want to ask you about your upcoming fight. Um, you know, I mentioned a couple of times we've heard tons and tons about it, but something I am curious about Obviously, this card was supposed to take place in Korea. Now it, it's it's in Vegas, but you still have the Korean times. Like, are you, one, disappointed it's not in Korea? Were you looking forward to that at all? And two, are you annoyed that you still have to fight at like 2 a.m. in the morning just in Vegas? Wow, I, I haven't heard that yet. You didn't know that? Yeah, it's like I didn't know 1, that. 1 a.m. Eastern time is when prelims start. Oh, Wow. Yeah. That's news to me, man. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. I didn't know that. I figured we were going at five or 7 PM and, uh, yeah. So <laughs> Korean times, my friend. Yeah. I guess I get the, uh, I guess I get the, the time zone change without having to do the travel. I, you know, is, does that like throw you off at all? Is that going to affect you or, eh? I mean, it's, I'm a, my hired, you know, mercenary or you know mercenary for hire you know i'm gonna go in there and do my job i you know i don't i it'll be different uh i guess i'll take a nap around seven and wake up ready to go you know <laughs> yeah man that, that's different for sure um 
And another thing that was in the news this week surrounding you on Twitter was buzzing. I don't know if you saw it. You had you were like, I don't know, every week it seems there's a fighter involved in like crazy line movements, right? Like betting lines. Like you're up here as a favorite underdog, blah blah. You're did you see that you were the fighter this week that had some crazy line movement? I did not. <laughs> I don't know if you pay attention to that at all. It doesn't really matter. It's just betters talk. But you went from this was all on Monday. Monday you went from a plus 270 underdog and then you went to mm-hmm. a plus 210 underdog all the way down to a plus 170 underdog and then back up to a plus 240 underdog in the span of like three hours and everybody on twitter was talking about it do you do you, do you put any thought into that at all or any reason for that what's up with that oh man the last time uh, my new york fight last year for lfa i walked in and we're standing behind the curtain and i look up at the the uh, screen i'm like a six to one underdog you know um going into that fight and then yeah you know i don't know that's the first time i i realized like oh okay i'm finally made it to that level where they're gonna start betting on me you know and i i guess i would say i kind of think about it in the same way as going into somebody's backyard and having to fight them you know it's like you know the crowd's against you and you know nobody's on your side and you know, you can either succumb to that pressure and let and allow that to affect you, or you can go out there and just be ready to prove all the people wrong. You know, and go. You know, my my outlook is I'm gonna go in. They get and all the betters that are betting against me, they're gonna they're gonna hate me. And when I come out, hopefully I'm gonna have their respect. And if not, hopefully they're salty as shit. Love that attitude. And just just to be fair, a lot of people are betting on you in this one. I know you probably don't care about that, but. People like you in this matchup, man. The uh, the betters, the fans, they're they're backing you, dude. So they're they're, they're all looking to cash on them underdog odds and make Vegas That's right. pay. That's I, right. I'm hoping. I'm ho- I, I want to deliver. I'm I'm not only hoping I'm gonna deliver. Yeah. Yeah, man. Very excited for the fight. It's a uh, a great matchup, and I've been watching your interviews for like three weeks straight, talking about it. I can tell you're just buzzing with energy, ready to get in there and. Uh, perform and write that wrong from your debut now adam my last question before we get out of here another break from fighting because that's what we know you as adam the ufc fighter right but yeah. behind that you're adam fugit the person you have a whole personality i'm sure you have hobbies and interests that don't revolve around fighting in the cage maybe i'm wrong maybe that's all you do but if there is a time in your life when you are relaxing or chilling or watching tv or doing something that isn't fighting and training what is that what does uh adam fugit the person look like well, um, <laughs> I'm an uncle, um, first and foremost, you know, I got two nephews and a niece and a big advocate for mixed martial arts and stuff. So uh, my goal this year is to get both my nephews into jujitsu or, or re- some, some form of wrestling, um, a dog dad, you know, I just had to go to the vet and pay a large sum to get my boy cleaned up a little bit. And, um, you know, uh, other than that, I'm kind of just a homebody. And lately I've been keeping up on the, the new HBO show, The Last of Us, and watching that because I've played the video game. I like that. So. so can I I have a hot, hot take about this show, right? I didn't play the video game. I am not an idiot. I know this is a great show. I know it's very well done. And everybody who played the video game seems to think it's a great adaptation, which is like awesome news for, for yep. just being a TV fan. But here's the but. Two episodes in, man, I, I'm I'm not sold yet. And yeah. I think the reason being is like I see people on Twitter being like, oh, my gosh, this is the next Breaking Bad. This is the next Sopranos, the next Oz, whatever. And like so I went into it with that expectation. And like I said, I think it's a great show. But some of the acting, I'm like, what? What is that, man? And then some of like the character choices in the story, I'm like, why are you going into the city? during an apocalypse like stay at home guys like there's so many things that i'm like oh i want it to be but the ending of the last episode i think really set up what i think will be in like the rest of the series so i'm I'm on board i'm gonna watch it still but i'm like one of the only people in the world who has not been blown away yet for sure no um i like the actor pascal he's he's great he's, he's great i've loved him in the most of his uh his movies that i've seen mine is probably that kingsman movie where he was the villain uh yeah it was corny and the and the fake texas accent i'm not yeah. a big fan of that but um hopefully that's a fake accent hopefully it's not not, not truly from texas but uh i'm not really sell, sold on ellie um the character that they chose um 
but I also could see her, you know, she was good in Game of Thrones. I don't know what the actress's name is. She was good in Game of Thrones. I could see her pulling it out and and, and making a, a great run of that character. But as far as the storyline goes and everything right now, um, it's awesome because it's literally the game, like, That's cool. you know, with a, with a couple extras. And so um, it's been really cool to, to watch because unfortunately, you know, watching the Witcher and they've very much deviated from the original. Um, I don't know if you're a halo guy, but they butchered that TV show. I, yeah, I, I can't stand it when you do that. Um, you got something that is already great and you got to come and try to put some kind of spin on it and make it your own. Stupid. I mean, if it's, <laughs> if, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Agreed, man. Agreed. And uh, interesting you say that about Ellie, because Ellie, like someone who didn't play the game, I actually really like her as a character. It was, uh, I don't remember her name, but it was Joel's girlfriend or whatever, the, the, her Tess, I think, right? Yes. I, I didn't like her, man. I thought she was like horrible. I, I couldn't stand her. And then like the leader of the Fireflies, who I'm sure will be back, didn't like her either. But otherwise, I'm on board, man. I'm on board. I'm just not in love with it yet, but I hope that changes. For sure, for sure. No, I'm gonna keep paying attention and watching it. I, I, I like it so far. I, I'm not over head over heels. I'm just glad that they're doing the the game justice by following the storyline. That does make me happy to hear that game players are happy with it. Um, but Adam, before we get out of here, man, again, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. But you have tons of fans and supporters, family and friends. You know, everybody's excited for your fight. I just want to ask you: Is there anything you'd like to say to everyone? The mic is yours. Just, I appreciate all the positive vibes and the support, you know, um, that's, that's really all I've ever, you know, wanted or asked for. And, um, you know, anytime I get somebody reaching out, I just want to help them out as, as best I can, however I can. And, you know, um, that's, that's a part of the reason why I get in there. I like putting on good shows and being entertaining and, and showing, you know, young fans and potential young, uh, fighters or, other athletes, young athletes, like, you know, it, it is work. You, know, you got to put your, your mind, you know, to the sport and you got to, you know, that mama mentality, but you know, there's nothing special here for me. It's just putting in the hard work, doing the reps and, you know, um, you can do it too. Go chase your dream. And man, like when I say this, like myself being a journalist and producer and all of us, we appreciate you giving us all time to come on our podcasts and shows. It means a lot. And then also, more importantly, all the up and coming fighters, all the fans and supporters, they get to see so much content of yours. So truly, Adam, thank you so much. Like means a lot that you're giving me and everybody the time and uh, getting your face out there and showing everyone what you're all about, because February 4th at UFC Vegas 68, we're going to see it go down, everybody. Go follow Adam. I will link all of his social medias below or left or right, wherever I edit Adam. And when I say this, I mean it. Do not miss it. Adam Fugit going to get his first UFCW February 4th. Adam, my man, thank you so much. Enjoy your uh, rest of your few days before fight week starts and kick ass. All right, brother. Thanks so much, man. Have a good day.